All right, so this is a recipe that I'm very excited to share with all of you. This is a chicken and potato casserole with rosemary panko. There's quite a bit of work to do, so let's get right to it. The first thing you're going to do is get a block of Swiss cheese and go ahead and shred that up. And if you don't have one of these devices, go ahead and shred it by hand with a grater. Next thing we're going to do is slice up some bacon. This is low sodium bacon. And the reason why I want you to use low sodium bacon is because we're seasoning every element of this dish. And if you used regular bacon, I think it would come out way too salty. And I'm glad I ended up using the low sodium because I was able to have control of all the seasonings that went into this. Now that our bacon is all sliced up, it's time to cook it. And I was cooking this on a medium low heat. And I cooked this all the way through until it was nice and crispy. You don't want it to be too underdone, mainly because it's going to be baked evenly with all the other ingredients, so you don't have to worry about it overcooking. When I was putting the ingredients to make this casserole, I was debating whether I was going to use bacon or ham, and in the end, I realized there is no competition. Bacon is always going to win. And once your bacon is completely cooked, we're just going to put it on a paper towel so that it can soak up all the grease. Meanwhile, the grease that's in the pan, I want you to keep that because we're going to cook our chicken in that. Speaking of our chicken, we're going to take three chicken breasts that have been trimmed and tenderized, and we're going to season them with some salt and pepper. And you're going to want to rub it on both sides of the chicken. Like I said, I'm seasoning every part of this. And if you'd rather use boneless chicken thighs, that's fine too. So now we're going to cook this in our bacon grease, and that's going to give this chicken such a delicious and smoky flavor. Like, seriously, if you were here right now, your mouth would be salivating because the kitchen smells amazing. I had this chicken cooking on medium heat for about 4 minutes on each side. Make sure it's cooked all the way. If you need to, go ahead and use a thermometer and make sure that it's at least 165 degrees in the middle. If not, you can go ahead and just cut it in half because we're going to end up chopping this chicken up anyway. And once your chicken is completely cooked, go ahead and put that to the side. Once you chop it up into 1 inch cubes, make sure that it's completely cooled first before you put it in a bowl or on a plate and cover it up and put it in the fridge. And then go ahead and do the exact same thing with your third chicken breast. Next thing we're going to do is par-cook our potatoes, and I'm taking four small russet potatoes. You can use Yukon Gold or Idaho potatoes, but I prefer to use russets. I think they have the best taste, and they're also very easy to peel. I do recommend peeling them and not leaving the skins on. It's just not going to come out good if you do that. And once they're all washed, we're going to go ahead and cube these up, just like the chicken, into about one-inch cubes. You want them to be about the same size as the chicken, because, like I said, this is all going to cook evenly. And once this is all cubed up, we're going to take all these potatoes and put them in a large saucepan, completely submerged in water. And we're going to put this on high heat until it comes to a boil. And I'm just going to make this as salty as the sea. And once this comes to a boil, you're going to let it sit for 5 minutes. After 5 minutes, go ahead and check it with a fork. It's not going to be cooked all the way, but that's fine. Just make sure the fork goes in smooth without breaking the potato. Next up, we're going to make our sauce. I put in two tablespoons of unsalted butter until it's completely melted over medium heat. And I'm also adding in an entire white onion and some fresh garlic. And I'm just going to cook this in my saucepan until the onions are softened and the garlic is roasted. Next, I'm adding all-purpose flour. And this is going to be the thickening agent for our sauce, so I'm basically making a roux right now. And once the flour is all cooked in there completely, we're going to add some milk. I recommend using whole milk for this. You're going to get much better results. And I'm just going to give this a good stir with my wooden spoon until I add the rest of my milk and some water. And once again, I'm going to give this another good stir. And honestly, I'm just going to keep doing this for a little while. This took about 10 minutes until the sauce thickened up a bit. And the next thing I'm going to do is add the Swiss cheese that I shredded up earlier. And this is going to turn into a Mornay, basically. A Mornay is a bechamel sauce that has cheese added to it. And that's basically what this is. It's going to be a little bit more liquidy because I added the water, but it's okay. You don't want it to be too thick. And after you drop your bag of bacon in there, please please don't add the bag in there. That's not one of the ingredients. And stir in your bacon. It's time to take this off the heat and add our seasonings. And of course, I'm going to add some salt and pepper in there. But I'm also going to add some sour cream. And the sour cream is going to add a really good tanginess to this sauce. And I'm also adding some paprika and some garlic powder because, you know, you can never have too much garlic. Some people would disagree with me on that, but garlic was my first word, so my parents should have just known from there. And give that a taste, make sure it's to your liking, and now we're going to add our chicken and our potatoes. We're finally almost done with this thing, we're almost there. And once you've dumped all your chicken and all your potatoes in there, and you realize that you should have used a bigger bowl for this, we're just going to toss this all around in our sauce, until it's all evenly distributed. And once this is all done, we're going to put this in a 13 by 9 inch glass baking dish that's been greased. You could use butter or cooking spray if you'd like. And you're just going to take your spoon and spread this evenly across the dish. And I just realized I'm saying the word even a lot, so I guess that's the word of the day. And the last thing we're going to do is make our panko topping. So I'm putting some panko breadcrumbs in a bowl, 
And I'm also going to add some rosemary. That's an ingredient I haven't used in a while. And I may have done a thing and bought a rosemary tree because I have problems and I should really go see somebody. But if you don't have a tree like I do, go ahead and buy fresh rosemary from the store. It's very easy to get and it's not too expensive. And once you put all your rosemary in the panko, we're just going to drench this in olive oil and just give that a toss. And what's good about this is that not only is it flavorful, but that panko is going to give this a nice crisp topping. And once you toss all those ingredients together, we're going to go ahead and just sprinkle this evenly on top of our casserole. This is going to give you another layer of texture, so make sure that the breadcrumbs cover every nook and cranny. And last but not least, we're going to top this with some freshly grated Parmesan. This is going to make it so delicious and even more crispy on top. And this is going to go in a 350 degree oven for 45 minutes. After 45 minutes, you are greeted with this. This smelled so good, I could not wait to dig into this thing, so I dug in immediately. And I'm very happy to say that after all that hard work, it was worth it. I think this is probably the best thing that I've made so far. I know I've said that a lot about past dishes, but I really mean it with this one. You taste everything in here. The garlic, the rosemary, the bacon, the chicken, the paprika, both cheeses, the parmesan and the swiss. And I love the texture. Like, you get the juiciness of the chicken along with the creaminess of the sauce along with the crunchy panko breadcrumbs on top. It all goes together so well, making this great dish. And every once in a while, it's nice to make something this elaborate. It takes time, but in the end, you feel good about yourself. And this is a delicious dish for families, for friends, for date night. It's great to have with a glass of white wine. I mean it, guys. Make this dish. It is worth it. All right, guys. I hope you all enjoyed this one. Please remember to like and subscribe, and I will see you all next time.